Hello everyone. So in this lesson, we will be drawing an orange pepper together. So basically, you can start using a pencil to kind of roughly lay out how big you want your pepper to be. So basically, I want my pepper to be about this size. Like a real life size. I'm going to be taking about this much space on paper. I'm going to start drawing. So I start with the top part. Again, slow down, look at the curve. It's not a straightforward curve. Here, kind of sinking down and coming up a little bit. Each single pepper looks different. Here. So I'm going to stop here because this is around the stem is sticking out. So here I'm going to add the ridge of the pepper. Here, this part sticks out a little bit and it's getting wider around the bottom. Stop over here. Alright, so this part is kind of tricky, so I'm going to use my pencil. So somewhere here. There's one curve of ridge. There's another one here. There's another one, this is over here, this is the stem, where the stem is, and coming out. Okay, so if you're not sure like where to start, you can kind of trace with a pencil and then draw with, with your pen, if you're not sure. curvy stem coming out, just kind of like an elephant's trunk. these um, it's like a tiny little folds on the stem okay so that's the details that you need to watch out for and so this stem sticking out um, there's tiny little lines that shows its flow kind of like this there's textures this way and that way a little bit again use like little dots and don't push your pens too hard when you're drawing these textured lines Just keep it gentle nice and gentle okay and This ridge over here is kind of part of this section of the pepper. There's a little bit more uh, muscles. There's a little bit of muscle over here. Again, use very gentle pressure to draw these lines so it's not too dark.
Okay, I think I am done drawing the lines for this pepper. Okay, so now I'm gonna start painting. I'm gonna use my two round brushes, number 12 and number 8. And I have my water container and a wet towel. So first of all, I'm gonna use water to kind of wet the surface of the pepper on paper. Okay, so I want, because I want the paint to spread out nice and smooth. So you won't really get dry brushing when you wet your paper first before you put the paint on. The paint is going to be laid on here nice and smooth if you have some water on the paper before. Okay, so as we talked about in the beginning, um, there are many parts, you know, with the highlights because the surface of this pepper is very shiny, especially here. I see highlights over here, 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 some are here around the top and a little bit over here and a tiny dot over here. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna be mindful to leave those parts white instead of painting them in solid. I want to show the texture of this pepper is smooth and shiny. Okay? So when I see some of people when they're painting with watercolors, I mean the first layer they're not aware of those highlights and they just paint those in and it's very hard to, um, to make it shiny later. Okay, now I'm gonna grab some yellow orange. Okay, so I'm leaving those highlights white. Okay, so that's the first layer of the pepper. So far into it, you can see it's shiny already because I left these highlights white. So now I'm gonna wait for this first layer to dry a little bit before I move on to the second layer. Okay, so now I am moving to the second layer. And I am mixing a darker orange.
so that's my second layer i'm going to do a little bit blending with my smaller round brush Basically, I'm grabbing a little bit of water and some of the second layer of red orange and just kind of rub it around the boundaries of some hard edges. Not too much rubbing. Okay, I think this is good at the second layer. In the next layer, I'm gonna add some shade color for this pepper. So while I'm waiting, I'm gonna paint the stem of the pepper. So it makes like a, <clears throat> a grass green. So I'm grabbing some meridian green and some yellow, lemon yellow to make it a little lighter, fresher. So again, on the stem, there's like little shiny parts too, so you don't have to paint every single space in. It's very shiny. So now I see most most surface of this pepper is not shiny anymore, so I'm ready to start my third layer. The shade part, okay? So basically I had my original orange. I'm mixing a little bit of red in it. And the complementary color for orange is blue, so I'm gonna grab some blue. Not too much. So this is the shade color for your pepper. It's kind of brownish. And I am kind of applying it somewhere here around the bottom. Okay, not too much. You don't want to make your pepper look too dirty looking. Grab some over here. Maybe I see some just rich. Actually here too. here around the corners and edges stinking down parts is pretty much in shadow So basically once I think I capture the essence, the light and shadow, I stop instead of rubbing too much. Now I'm gonna add a little bit dark, um, shady green for, for the stem. So now I'm mixing the shade color for the stamp and I'm mixing a little bit of red into it. It's quite dark. 
So red and green are complementary colors. When they mix together, they create shade colors for each other. I'm gonna apply it over here. It's quite dark because this part is sinking in. Again, be beware of your highlights and don't paint over. Add an even darker shade for this tiny little corner over here. Tiny bit green. Okay, that's good. And now I think I'm ready to paint my shadow now. Okay. So before I paint the shadow, again, I'm going to wet the area first. With water. I'm seeing the shape is like here. It's kind of shape because my light source is coming from this way. The shadow is like landing somewhere here. So for the shadow, you can be, um, you know, be very flexible. So basically, I often make my shadow by mixing ultramarine blue, a little bit green, and some red or magenta to create a kind of like dark, dark purplish shade color. So basically, I often mix ultramarine blue with green. Then I'm gonna apply it to my area underneath the pepper so the first layer again just do like a very light layer just a little bit dry brushing over here it's fine it's very natural and then I'm gonna make it a little bit darker you know the parts around the edge it's even darker that's here so just let it go let it blend let the dark and light blend together nice and smoothly instead of over rubbing it 